first conceived the project. The medical profession had put an exhibition on in Manchester Central Library of photographs of the effects and, you know, what your chances were. And that sort of spurred me on more to do, to, you know, did you to do something about it. Did you set a particular length of time for the project to run? Uh, no, no, because at first the, the, the project was going to be a... In fact, the project wasn't going to be a project. It was going to be um, one or two pictures on the theme of nuclear war. But as I got into it, I got more involved and some of the drawings, w w you know, were not working. So therefore, I felt like I had to, because if something's not working, I always work harder at it. Or I try to make it work anyway. I won't give up straight away. You grew up walking around this countryside and playing in it as a boy? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but um, I mean, like I say, all over Marple, not just, I mean, obviously these areas, as I was 15, 16, so they're more important, I suppose, in the landscapes then, because, uh, you know, I was painting this then. But I've done scenes of Donkey Woods and places like that, more intimate views. But, uh, yeah, old Marple and sort of surrounding areas, Romley, Bradbury, places like that, I've been, a, well, I've been the big inspiration, that's why I've done most of my landscapes. Got most of my ideas from, anyway. You brought me a folder of work in uh, about two and a half years ago. Uh, I just took one look and said, you know, absolutely fabulous. For the uh, draftsmanship, for the subject matter? Yeah, everything. Everything. Yeah, I just thought it was, you know, absolutely terrific. I had the basics of an idea before I start a picture, but I work into it a lot more, so a lot of the ideas come naturally by me working, say, till 12, you know, o'clock at night, because you're on your own and you can... Um, you can actually, you, con you can concentrate and ideas come to you more than trying to sit down and trying to sort out all your ideas and say, this is a good idea, this is a bad one. Actually, the ideas come through. And if they come through well, the only mistake in working like that is that sometimes if it fails and you've took ages on your picture, then, you know, it, it's a failure. Hopefully you learn from that. I think this one's not worked for me, personally. I was trying to get a lot of detail. And what it's about is before the actual, you know, before the actual explosion or before it actually, you know, a nuclear war may occur. So it's thoughts people have got, people who think they're safe, you know, in the, com in, in the countryside, like, with the, you know, the council houses here and all the countryside, think they're far away and it won't touch them, um, will be actually touched by it because everybody will be touched by nuclear war. These are um, cancers. And that. So I've done a lot of research. I got, I'd wrote to two doctors in Manchester and they helped me a bit. And um, also I've done a lot of research as far as getting books on cancer, getting books on leukaemia, uh, getting books on um, the actual medical effects. And the BMA's book uh, I read and helped me quite a lot because I could find out what actually happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I'd done a sketch for this about four years ago, but it wasn't on the theme. It was just the best face I'd done to fit in what I was with what I was doing. So I'd really just blown it up, drawn it lar you know, larger. Um, and it's like a mask, so it's like a screaming face coming from the landscape, which is in here again. So it's all echoed. There's a deformed baby. Obviously deformed births after Hiroshima. The eye, I think, this one here yeah, took me about uh, about six days. Six days on one eye? Yeah. How many hours a day? About 12. You don't just do a dark mark with a, with a, with a say, 3 or 4B or 5B pencil. Um, you have to build it up so that it doesn't rip into the paper, because this is thick paper as well. Um, and if you just want to get that effect quickly, you can do it in about a day or two days. I'd put maps of Russia and America all split up, that's what they made up out of. Um, I didn't want to actually say, ah, that's America and that's Russia, but I wanted to actually use the textures as well, because I've used smallpox texture on the maps, because lots of diseases have come back after a nuclear war. So it was just working, drawing actually out, and then working in, whereas these maps here are done a lot quicker. Um, it's just like smudging the paper. So what you do is you put it on in lines with your pencil first, and then you smudge it, and then you take it off where the areas you want white. Who would you say you're most influenced by, if at all, by anybody? Well, I've got a lot of painters that I like, like Leonardo da Vinci. I think his paintings are super, uh, are very good. Um, I like 
got Ben Brown. I like uh, Jura. I like Jura's work when I was about 14. Um, fanatically because of the detail and that. That's what I was into more then. Um, I like uh, Friedrich, Caspar David Friedrich. He's a German painter, romantic painter. I like his work because it's very moody. It's not so much detail. It's got all the colours. Are, um, I mean, they're well painted. I like Vermeer. I've got a lot of artists who I like. The most, I think, the artist who was influencing that stuff, like in the last year and a half, the nuclear, was um, people like Turner, the big skies. I worked out my composition by drawing lines, so I, I used the basics of a triangle coming out, and then I left people on the edge of that so it would fall out. Um, so these. There's like a line here, invisible line that I drew out, and a line here, and a line there, which leads you to that bit there, and a line again there. So they're all moving out from one point, yet you can tell the distance. You just hinted we're taking off the rubber, and a tiny bit clearer here, um, to show that that you know you know where the land, you know where the um, uh, distance is. So you feel the eye still moves around I the think picture, I, right? I I, there's one thing that I maybe I could have done maybe a larger tree here to pull you back in to the overall picture and make it work again as a sort of like full circle but I like the idea of it just like falling out and she's just going to fall out of the picture because it gives you more movement some people will say they prefer the other work although it's very horrific because of the draftsmanship and the skill that they can yeah. read in your work this somehow mutes your apparent your, abil your ability as a artist. What do you think about that? Um, well, I probably would have agreed with that. I think before I'd done the drawings, but I don't think I do now because even though I'm not saying these are really major or something, but it's major for me because I would never I would never be able to attempt to do anything like this before. Does does this in a way conclude the project? Um, yeah, yeah, because. Yeah, it's more that it's what I was most pleased with. It was the effect I wanted, but I didn't even dream that I was going to do it like this. But when I'd done it, I realised that that was the effect I wanted, even though there's still some things that I'm not... Um, I could have maybe worked out a bit more. Um, this, for me, was the aim of the project, to, for me, artistically, to actually achieve something that I wasn't familiar with, and yet still create... Um, the atmosphere and the setting about people and pain and people coming through this dust and falling. 